سوی آزادی گرد همایی بزرگ مقاومت ایران پاریس دیلپند اول تیر 1392 22 جوان به مناسبت سی خرداد عید آغاز مقاومت روز شهیدان و زندانیان سیاسی سال روز تأسیس ارتش آزادی بخش ملی Cher Maria Moradjavi, je viens ici comme maire d'Auvers-sur-Oise au nom de l'ensemble des collègues maires de France qui soutiennent la résistance en Iran. Et d'ailleurs, je les appelle à me rejoindre ici sur la scène, mes chers collègues. Je voudrais d'abord dire un mot de ma collègue Nelly Roland, maire de Villepinte, qui n'a plus resté mais qui soutient votre mouvement. Les maires, les maires adjoints, les conseillers municipaux, les conseillers généraux et bien sûr aussi les parlementaires, vous verrez après moi, sont là nombreux et représentent celles et ceux qui n'ont pu être présents aujourd'hui mais qui vous apportent leur soutien. Je veux aussi dire que, à côté des élus, beaucoup de représentants du mouvement associatif sont là. Mon ami Pierre Bercy, le président des Nouveaux Droits de l'Homme, Abdelhaman Daman, président du Conseil des Démocrates Musulmans de France, le bâtonnier Gilles Paruel, bien sûr, Madame Favra de la Fasti, des représentants du MRAP, de France Liberté. Ceux-là sont à vos côtés comme nous-mêmes. Chers amis iraniens, Ici présents, mais aussi celles et ceux qui sont en Iran, qui sont en Irak et qui sont dans l'ensemble des pays du monde, je salue tous nos amis iraniens. Vous êtes très nombreux à suivre aujourd'hui ce grand rassemblement. En effet, cela fait dix ans, presque jour pour jour, le 17 juin 2003, le jour de la grande rafle à Auvers-sur-Oise. Bien sûr, nous avons encore ces images en tête des 1200 policiers envahissant la ville pour venir trouver qui, paraît-il, des terroristes en armes. Eh bien, il n'y avait ni armes, ni terroristes. Les faits l'ont démontré rapidement. C'est pourquoi... C'est pourquoi, depuis cette date, au mois de juin, nous nous retrouvons à Villepinte, chaque année de plus en plus nombreux, autour de vous, chers amis de la résistance iranienne. Je veux vous dire encore deux ou trois choses. Votre mouvement, il est fort et se renforce. Vous le voyez, des délégations du monde entier sont là aujourd'hui à vos côtés. Je les salue tous car, comme nous, ils partagent les valeurs de liberté, de démocratie qui sont les vôtres. Je veux aussi vous dire que nous ne sommes pas dupes de la prétendue élection présidentielle en Iran. Vous savez, c'est beaucoup plus facile quand on choisit les candidats compatibles avec les ayatollahs et les mollahs, évidemment. Dans ce cas-là, il n'y a pas beaucoup de choix réels pour la population. 
pour le peuple iranien. Donc nous n'avons aucune illusion sur ce qui peut sortir de cette élection en Iran. D'ailleurs, les premières déclarations du nouveau président, tout de suite, ont de quoi nous inquiéter. Sa première déclaration a été de dire que, bien sûr, il ne touchera pas à l'évolution de la construction de la force nucléaire en Iran. On s'en doutait, mais ça allait mieux encore en le disant. Donc effectivement, il n'y a pas pour nous beaucoup d'illusions à se faire sur les prétendus réformateurs qui seraient au pouvoir. Et puis je voudrais aussi m'associer à ce qui a été dit tout à l'heure par la présidente Mariam Rajavi sur les conditions absolument scandaleuses qui sont celles du camp si mal nommé de liberté, qui est tout sauf la liberté, qui est vraiment une prison, une prison sur laquelle on peut tirer, on l'a vu tout à l'heure dans les images, et ça, aujourd'hui, j'en appelle à la communauté internationale, personne, aucun démocrate, aucun humaniste ne peut tolérer ce qui a été fait il y a quelques jours encore à Liberté ou ce qui avait déjà été fait en février dernier. C'est un scandale absolu au nom de l'humanité et donc j'en appelle à la mobilisation de l'ensemble du monde libre pour soutenir ce qui se passe à Liberté et pour dire que soit ces milliers de combattants aujourd'hui sans armes évidemment, ce combattant pacifiste, ces mojahidines qui sont là à liberté doivent retourner à Ashraf, soit il faut accepter de leur donner le statut de réfugié politique. Voilà, je voudrais, je voudrais conclure mon propos en redisant combien nous sommes admiratifs du mouvement, du mouvement de résistance, du mouvement qui doit conduire à un moment ou à un autre, et le plus tôt sera le mieux, à ce que le peuple iranien retrouve la liberté et trouve la démocratie. Vive l'Iran libre, vive le combat de la résistance Madame la Présidente, Mesdames et Messieurs, peuple libre d'Iran, la résistance iranienne mène depuis des années un combat inlassable contre le régime iranien qui multiplie les provocations, les menaces, les comportements inhumains comme la vague récente d'exécution. Ce grand rassemblement d'aujourd'hui s'organise autour de la personne, du rayonnement personnel et du programme de Mariam Rajavi, présidente élue du Conseil national de la résistance iranienne. Pour l'Iran libre de demain qui appelle à la séparation de la religion et de l'État et à une république fondée sur le pluralisme politique, l'égalité des femmes et des hommes, l'abolition de la peine de mort et un Iran non nucléaire. Le CNRI s'est révélé dans la pratique, et vous le savez, comme la seule véritable opposition au régime iranien. Nous partageons les mêmes valeurs républicaines et démocratiques que vous. Et nous sommes d'accord avec vous, Madame la Présidente, lorsque vous avez déclaré que la mascarade électorale qui vient de se dérouler en Iran ne doit tromper personne. Oui, vous l'avez dit, rien ne changera en Iran sans liberté d'expression et sans droit de l'homme. Et tant qu'il y aura des prisonniers politiques et qu'il n'y aura pas de liberté d'action pour les partis, que la politique d'agression du régime se poursuivra en Syrie et en Irak et que le régime insistera pour obtenir la bombe. Nous avons décidé, nous, élus français, depuis des années d'apporter notre soutien à un changement démocratique en Iran. Et je suis, avec nous tous, signataires 
des appels du CNRI pour protester contre les violations massives des droits humains par une théocratie despotique. La menace nucléaire, le danger de l'intégrisme, nous appelons à une réaction forte et collective de soutien. En tant que maire du premier arrondissement de Paris, j'ai l'honneur de vous présenter ce recueil de 12 000 signatures de maires et d'élus de France qui soutiennent les résidents d'Ashraf et de Liberté dont nous réclamons la protection et la sécurité par des garanties. J'ai l'honneur, en notre nom collectif, de vous présenter ce recueil pour que vive la démocratie et la liberté en Iran. Madame la Présidente, Mesdames et Messieurs les élus et représentants des, des pays de l'Union Européenne, de l'Amérique, de l'Afrique, du continent asiatique, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis iraniennes, chers amis iraniens, je m'exprime devant vous au nom du Comité parlementaire pour un Iran démocratique, un comité parlementaire qui a une longue histoire, presque aussi longue que votre résistance. Mon ami François Colcombé en, en fit partie en son temps. Un comité qui rassemble des élus des six groupes politiques qui com composent l'Assemblée nationale. Je parle en présence d'Yves Colcombé, d'Yves Bonnet, qui représente le comité français pour un Iran démocratique et qui, à côté des élus locaux, à côté des parlementaires, mobilise la société civile française en soutien à votre combat et pour un Iran démocratique. Je voudrais simplement faire deux choses à cet instant. D'une part, comme représentant du peuple français, saluer tous nos collègues. Et ils sont chaque année plus nombreux ici à Villepinte, des autres pays de l'Union Européenne, des États-Unis, de l'Amérique, du Canada, du continent asiatique. Cet élargissement continu du soutien à la résistance et à l'opposition démocratique iranienne témoigne de cet élargissement de votre combat, témoigne de cette évolution de ce rapport de force après bien des combats gagnés, notamment sur le terrain juridique. Ils doivent conduire la communauté internationale à renforcer son attitude de fermeté, à poursuivre et amplifier des sanctions dont on a vu qu'elles produisent aujourd'hui leurs effets, que le peuple iranien supporte de moins en moins cette dictature. En tout cas, je veux les saluer, les remercier d'être venus chez nous, en France, pays des droits de l'homme, et leur dire que les parlementaires français, les élus français, comme eux, sont aujourd'hui pleinement mobilisés dans le soutien à la résistance iranienne, dans l'affirmation de la nécessité d'un changement de régime, de ce que la mascarade démocratique d'un scrutin organisé où la libre expression n'existe pas, où la libre candidature n'existe pas, où l'impression de changement est en réalité factice. La seule chose qui s'est exprimée, c'est la volonté de changement du peuple iranien et changement radical de régime. Je veux simplement vous dire que nous sommes aujourd'hui à l'Assemblée nationale, et c'est dans ce document, une majorité de parlementaires, de députés français aujourd'hui, a d'une part soutenir la plateforme sur laquelle Mariam Rajavi et le CNRI aujourd'hui combattent, une plateforme démocratique dont nous partageons les valeurs. Nous sommes aussi une majorité à demander que les 
les Iraniens présents en Irak, dans le camp Liberty, soient protégés, puissent retourner à Ashraf. Et nous demandons tout simplement aujourd'hui au ministre des Affaires étrangères, Laurent Fabius, au Premier ministre, Jean-Marc Ayrault, au président de la République, François Hollande, dont je n'oublie pas qu'en 2004, il s'était rendu dans notre département à Auvers, aujourd'hui d'exprimer de, d'abord, comme les autres gouvernements, leur condamnation des agressions récentes. Et d'autre part, que, au plan international, la fermeté soit là pour que ce régime, ce régime dictatorial d'une dictature au surplus religieuse qui opprime le peuple iranien, tombe le plus rapidement possible. Je crois que c'est la responsabilité de la communauté internationale, c'est notre responsabilité d'obtenir cela de notre gouvernement. Avec vous, avec votre soutien, nous le ferons. Merci. survived Martin Kubler! Martin Kubler is gone! We survived the FTL listing! The MEK is delisted! And we will survive Rouhani and Maliki just like we did Kobler and delisting. I have the honor this evening of reading two, three important messages from the United States Senate. I first want to begin with the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Carl Levin. He writes, the United States should persist in pressing the government of Iraq to live up to its obligations under the December 2011 agreement with the United Nations to ensure the safety and security of Camp Liberty. testimony that you're about to give good morning everybody the status of, of the residents at camp ashraf from the iranian dissident group mek remains unresolved سلام بر همه شرکت کنندگان در کنفرانس برای تغییر دموکراتیک در ایران تعهد این گرد همایی به ایرانی آزاد و دموکراتیک یک پیام مهم و امید بخش برای مقاومت در برابر ظلم و ستم رژیم ایران به مردم ایران خواهد فرستاد این گرد همایی در زمانی برپا شده است که رژیم ایران نشان داده که یک انتخابات شفاف، واقعی و معتبر را نمیتواند تحمل کند. من خود را با نگرانی شما در مورد امنیت جمعی مخالفان رژیم ایران، اعضای سازمان مجاهدین خلق، ساکنان کمپ های لیبرتی و اشرف در عراق سهیم می دانم. من اخیرا نامی به وزیر خارجه جانکری نوشتم، 
و بر مسئولیت ویژه‌ای که ایالات متحده در قبال این ساکنان دارد تاکید کردم این تعهد ایالات متحده در قبال ساکنان کمپ اشرف است که آنان را به عنوان افراد حفاظت شده تحت کنوانسیون ژنو در دوران جنگ با عراق شناخته و این تعهد حتی پس از انتقال ساکنان اشرف به کمپ لیبرتی نیز تداوم دارد ایالات متحده باید دولت عراق را وادار کند که به تعهداتش بر اساس موافقتنامه دسامبر 2011 با سازمان ملل متحد پایبند باشد تا امنیت و ایمنی کمپ لیبرتی تضمین شود آمنان حملات سهمگین به کمپ لیبرتی از جمله در جوان 2013 که به طور گسترده نیز محکوم شده است باید به دست ادالت سپرده شوند Now, we have a letter from the chairman of the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Robert Menendez. And we have a video. Senator Menendez. If that is the fuel that allows Iran to, its march to nuclear weapons, then you need to cut off the fuel. Bonjour, salam, durud, hello and greetings to all of you gathered today in Paris. I'd like to thank Mrs. Rajavi for the opportunity to speak to you today. I join you in solidarity in condemning the latest deadly rocket attack on Camp Liberty that killed two and wounded many more. The second attack since February when eight were killed and scores injured. These acts of violence are unforgivable and only serve to prolong the day when the people in Camp Liberty and the people in Camp Ashraf can live without fear and uncertainty. The day is coming, my friends, the day is coming when the people in these camps are no longer the targets of terrorists, no longer the victims of violence, no longer left unprotected from terrorist attackers. Today I again call on the government of Iraq to do more to ensure the safety and security of the people in these camps and that it will never happen again. I call on the government of Iraq to thoroughly investigate this terrorist attack and hold responsible parties legally accountable. I call on Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki to do everything in his power to prevent further attacks. And I call on all nations to stand together to find a solution that ensures the long-term safety and well-being of the people in these camps and helps them build a better life for themselves and their families. Iran's supreme leader is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a moderate. He is not interested in reform any more than he is interested in the rights of well-being of the Iranian people. Instead, he has chosen to exercise his power to export terrorism, build a nuclear weapons program that has left Iran completely isolated from the international community, and repress the human and civil rights of the Iranian people, and specifically the rights of women and girls who are treated by the regime as chattel rather than people. Iran's provocative actions threaten not just regional stability, but pose an existential threat to her neighbors and are a threat to U.S. national security. Iran continues to export terrorist activity directly and through proxies like Hezbollah. 
It is actively supporting the Assad regime in Syria with fighters, arms, and petroleum, and its drive towards nuclear weapons is unrelenting. In my view, it remains the paramount national security challenge we face, certainly in the Middle East, if not the world. In response, the United States will continue to apply economic pressure and, if necessary, military pressure until the Ayatollah understands that the world its export of terrorism and its repression of the Iranian people. Let us hope and pray that, God willing, we will find a new beginning for Iran and the region. Thank you very much, and my thoughts and prayers are with you all. We finally have a letter from Republican leader Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri. He says, your cause is critical. Supporting a truly free and democratic Iran is important to the world, to the region, and to the many loved ones each of you still have there. Establishing a democratic Iran free of nuclear weapons that honors the rule of law and human rights can only be done with the support and voice of freedom like all of yours. دوستان عزیز خوشبختم که پیام قدردانی و حمایتم را برای گرد همایی دموکراسی در ایران که در پاریس برگزار می شود بفرستم خوشحالم که می بینم از ایالت میسوری هم ایرانیان مقیم آمریکا درگیر این موضوع مهم هستند هدف شما یعنی حمایت از یک ایران کاملا آزاد و دموکراتیک یک آرمان ضروری برای جهان و منطقه است و برای همه عزیزانی که در آنجا گرد آمده اند بسیار مهم است هدف ایجاد یک ایران دموکراتیک و آری از سلاح‌های اتمی که به حکومت قانون و حقوق بشر احترام می‌گذارد فقط می‌تواند از طریق صداهای آزادی مثل صدای شما محقق شود خوشحالم که جمعیت انبوهی در پاریس گرد هم می‌آیید تا از این هدف حمایت کنید ما تشکر از همه تلاش‌هایی که شما دارید انجام می‌دهید Senator Roy Blunt. Now it's my pleasure to invite up to the stage several members of the United States Congress from the House of Representatives. The first is the chairman, the chairman of the Subcommittee on Terrorism, Ted Poe. Thank you very much. To the sons of liberty and the daughters of democracy of Iran, I bring you greetings from the Congress of the United States of America. My name is Ted Poe. I'm from Texas, and so from my fellow Texans, howdy, y'all. I am glad to be here with my friend, member of Congress from Texas, Sheila Jackson Lee, and my friend William Clay from the great state of Missouri. And my in my former days, I was a judge in Texas, and I believe in justice, justice for everyone, everywhere. But if the Iranian government was put on trial, it would be found 
guilty, guilty of injustice, guilty of murder, guilty of arrests of political and religious people, and it would be found guilty of encouraging terrorism throughout the world, especially at Camp Liberty. Not long ago, I traveled to Iraq with members of the United States Congress. We met with President Maliki. We had one major request. We wanted to go and see for ourselves the people of Camp Ashraf and the conditions they lived in. And his answer was, no, no, no. And the reason was, he had something to hide. And Maliki still has something to hide in Camp Liberty. He condemns the attacks on Camp Liberty, but behind the scenes, his fingerprints are all over the attacks of your friends and neighbors and relatives in Camp Liberty. Some may ask, why is the United States interested in Camp Liberty and those thousands of people who live there? It is simple. It is freedom. Freedom. We are interested in human rights. And the first, the very first human right that we all have is to live in freedom no matter where we live in the world. We are all made the same way, no matter what we look like, no matter what our religious faith, where we live on this planet, young or old, deep down in our soul, we are made with the burning desire to live as a free people. And the people in Camp Liberty have that burning desire as well. And I say to our friends and our neighbors and your family members in Camp Liberty, do not give up hope. Do not give up hope. Your struggle for equality is hard. Freedom has always been hard. But we have had some successes. Let us not forget it took forever to finally convince the United States State Department to delist the MEK, appropriately so. They should, should have been delisted years ago, but that is a success. And I thank other members of the United States House and Senate for pushing this issue. Also, I want you to know that I earlier this year sponsored, along with a hundred other members of Congress, a resolution to condemn the attacks in Camp Liberty. And there are over a hundred members of the United States House of Representatives that have joined in this resolution. Let me specifically talk to you daughters of democracy, you daughters of Iran. We need you in this struggle. We need you in this fight. It is for not only you, but your daughters and your sons. And I com commend President Rahaji for her diligence and her work. Let me tell you something. My grandmother, who basically raised me, used to tell me this. She said that there is nothing more powerful than a woman. A woman that has made up her mind. And President-elect Rahaji has made up her mind. And I say to you daughters of Iran, you daughters of democracy, Rise up. Rise up. Let your voices be heard. Do not be silent. We need the voices of the daughters of Iran in this struggle.
Some in the world, some in the world say the new regime is different in Iran. Not so fast. Not so fast. Any time a person is put in power because the supreme leader gets to pick all of the candidates, you don't have an election, you have a selection. And that's what has occurred in Iran. You know, there is no liberty in Camp Liberty. Ironic name for Camp Liberty. It is everything but liberty. It is not a safe place. And it's no coincidence that on Election Day, it was once again attacked. It is more like a prison. In fact, as Mayor Giuliani has said before, it's worse than a prison. It's a concentration camp. Because in prison, you get to see your lawyers. In prison, you get to see your family. In prison, governments do not murder the people in prison. Camp Liberty is nothing but a concentration camp. You know, in uh, Camp Liberty, the people are barricaded behind the walls. The walls of fear, the walls of oppression. They must immediately, that means now, be moved to Camp Ashraf. No more, no more murders by the Iraqi government. No more outside intimidation by Iran and Hezbollah. The United States' obligation is to protect the people of Camp Liberty. Justice requires it, and justice is what we do. The cause of freedom has been difficult, but freedom has always been difficult. It has been costly, it has been expensive. Your friends and your families, they have died for liberty and for freedom. But I tell you that freedom will come again, maybe not today, Maybe not the next day, but that day, tomorrow, will come. Freedom has always been a struggle for any nation that now has it. The freedom, the day of freedom came in this nation, this nation of France, where we have our hosts. And it came as a struggle, and part of that struggle is portrayed in the play and the movie Les Miserables. Listen, if you will. Listen, if you will. Do you hear the people sing, lost in the valley of the night? It is the music of a people who are climbing to the light. For the oppressed of the earth, there is a flame that never dies. Even the darkest night will end when the sun does rise. So will you join me in this cause? Who will be strong and stand with me? Somewhere beyond the barricade, is there a world you long to see? Do you hear the people sing? Do you hear the distant drums? It is the future they bring when tomorrow comes. So will you join in our cause? Who will be strong and stand with me? Because somewhere beyond the barricade, there is a world they long to see. Do you hear the people sing? Do you hear the distant drums? It is the future they bring when tomorrow comes. And I say to you, my Iranian freedom fighters, tomorrow comes when freedom's flame will light the souls of all Iranians and the barricade of oppression will come down because we will not go away into the darkness of the night. We will not disappear without a fight. Our cause is right. Our motives are just. We will meet again soon, I hope, with you in a free and safe Iran.
Thank you. Thank you very much. All the members of the congressional delegation that are here with us this afternoon, in addition to Chairman Poe, I'd like to have Representative William Lacey Clay from Missouri, member of the Financial Services Committee. I'd like to have Representative Sheila Jackson Lee from the great state of Texas, member of the Homeland Security Committee, all join me up at the stage. You know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. But we will not succumb to the insanity that says Rouhani is a reformer and Maliki can be trusted. Please welcome those members of Congress who will call it as it is. Please. Our first member of Congress, Representative Lacey Clay. Madam Razavi, leaders of the Iranian democracy movement, and my courageous friends, a few years ago, constituents from the Persian-American community of St. Louis asked for my help. They told me of Madame Rajabi and her brave supporters from around the world who were fighting to free their homeland and to defend innocent refugees. They asked me to be one of their voices in Congress to tell the world that the Iranian people do not support the religious dictators and terrorists who currently run their country. They also inform me of the terrible injustices suffered by innocent Iranian refugees, first at Camp Ashraf and now at Camp Huria. The U.S. holds the government of Iraq completely responsible for their safety and they must take immediate steps to remove them from danger. You know, the, uh, the criminal regime in Tehran continues to constitute a direct threat to America's national security and to the peace of the world. In the words of General Martin Dempsey, Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I quote, not uh, Iran is a threat to U.S. national security in many ways, not simply by their move towards a nuclear weapon, but by their active support of terrorism around the world, end of quote. You know, there is no doubt that the Iranian regime has become the main generator and instigator for instability in the Middle East and elsewhere. You can find Tehran's violent fingerprints in Afghanistan, in Beiran, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Lebanon, in Africa, in Asia and South America. And most outrageously, you can find the result of Tehran's brutal support of oppression in the blood of 90,000 innocent Syrians, civilians who have been killed by the criminal Assad regime, which continues to enjoy Iran's full support. Uh, my friends, I know something about fighting oppression and the struggle for freedom. Uh, my family helped lead that effort in the United States. 
So I want you to understand today that I continue to stand with you as you demand an end of the regime's brutal treatment of women, of dissidents, of religious minorities, and anyone else who dares to defy their dictatorship. And I, uh, I join my congressional colleagues in support of House Resolution 60, calling on the U.S. government to fully protect your loved ones residing in Camp Uriah. Uh, this month, we know there was an election in Iran, but the election of a new president of the current regime changes nothing. We will judge Iran by its actions, and we will judge Iran by whether it ends its lethal support for the brutal Syrian regime, and we will judge Iran by whether it ends its active support of terrorist organizations around the world. And we will judge Iran by whether it ends its, its vicious and violent repression of all political dissent. My friends, I am proud to have supported your brave resistance movement. And I will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with you as you advance the fight for an Iran that is finally liberated from tyranny, extremism, and repression. May that be God's will, and may it come soon. Thank you all very much. My name is Sheila Jackson Lee. I am your sister. You are my family. And we are standing together in the struggle, and we will never, never give up. I am privileged to stand here with Republicans and Democrats. My dear friends, Congressman Ted Poe, Congressman William Lacey, and we stand here united as Americans, Republicans and Democrats, fighting for freedom with you, and we are never giving up. <laughs> to, to my dear sister, to all of you, Salome, and to my sister, to the President-elect, to the Freedom Fighter, to a woman of greatness, and that is President-elect Miriam Rajabi. I want to share with you in these few moments an appreciation for who has come here to be with you. There are pastors who are in the Christian faith. I hope that they will stand up wherever they might be. I want you to know that they have come from America. Like the Reverend Max Miller of Mount Hebron Baptist Church and his wife, he heads up the Baptist Ministers Association with hundreds of ministers. Or the Reverend David Punch of the Greater Zion Missionary Baptist Church, who come here wanting to stand with you. Or the Bishop Sheldon Beatty of Harvest Time, they come from the great state of Texas and from Arkansas and places beyond. They have come to stand with you. And so let me send this message to those who are seeking freedom in Camp Liberty, who should be immediately returned to Camp Ashraf. I am speaking to my brothers and sisters 
in Camp Liberty and the children that are there, the children that I want to lead a free Iran, we will not abandon you. We are going to be with you and you're going to be free. resistance is the inheritance of the great golden age of Persia when you celebrated liberty, when your whole social fabric was about religious and social freedom. You are the ancestors. You are the ones who are the people who have come out of that great legacy. Or Cyrus who freed the Jews. You are they. We cannot tolerate a lack of freedom. Your struggle is my struggle. And the brutality of last week's attack. Please understand that there is no divide between those in the United States who would condemn the dastardly brutality of last week including the Secretary of State who denounced it and whose heart and mind recognizes that we must, we must free those who are struggling in Camp Liberty. Free them. Let them go on to Camp Ashraf. Now, I have been with you. I am reminded of the many hours on the floor of the House with speeches begging for the MEK to be removed from the terrorist list. I remember, like you, the attacks, the disparaging remarks. Sheila Jackson Lee is a terrorist. I was not going to be moved. Because when you are right and you stand with the great history of the people of the Iranian resistance, you cannot be moved. I want the noose to be removed from the neck of our president-elect. I want the noose to be removed from your neck. I want you to be free. Many of you know that I have spoken often about our common travels. America has gone through a moment in history when President John F. Kennedy gave an amazing speech on civil rights and opened the doors of legitimizing the call for freedom by many who look like me. And then, of course, the bonding that came together, the leaders in the civil rights movement between so many diverse groups. Martin King said, change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. And so, as he told us in America, we must straighten our backs and work for our freedom. Don't let anyone cause you to bend down. You're going to stand up. Your backs are straight. You're fighting for freedom. I want you to understand that the Iranian resistance all over the world, you have come from all over the world, is proud and tolerant. You will not concede to the abduction and brutal murder that occurred to the president of the Iraqi Women's Syndicate, who was assassinated because she was a fierce opponent of the Iranian regime's deliberate intrusion in the lives in the Iraqi political, social, and economic system. And so it is our challenge and our duty to be able to stand up for those fallen soldiers, men and women, who are no longer here to tell the story. Many of you remember, and my heart is still pierced, because I remember this young college woman lying in the streets of Tehran. Many of you remember that with blood around her. I will never, never forget, nor will I forget the sisters who have come to me in Congress and in the United States to tell me of their children. I want them to know, all of you, 
that you will see your loved ones out of that camp, for those who have died will not die in vain. We will see them come and they will be free. The Iranian resistance celebrates the prosperity of women, minorities, cultural and religious institutions. Unlike the government today that focuses on oppression, that closes the oldest Christian church and puts the pastors in jail, we are an innovative people recognizing that our history is intertwined into liberty and justice and freedom. America's values are your values. And don't give up because we will not give up. Call us terrorists. Call us freedom fighters. We will not be daunted by words. We are ready to fight for freedom. I join with President-elect Rajavi that all women must have equal rights. As a member of the House Judiciary Committee, I join with her in an independent, separate court system that is not influenced by the religious community to give an unfair justice in terms of whatever religion you are. If they don't like it, you don't get justice. We want a system that is pure, that respects all religions. As I said to you, we started this journey with a number of my friends here some very long time ago. In addition to the floor speeches, many of you know that I've called and called our leaders when we were fighting to be able to remove the MEK off of the terrorist list. We wrote letters. We talked to the Secretary of State. You filed lawsuits uh, that we supported. And of course, I remember in dealing with the early stages of Camp Ashraf, talking to the special envoy two and three and four in the morning, not because I'm a member of the United States Congress, but because it was right, my heart was there, you deserve it, and we have to stand like that no matter what time we are called on to stand. So on behalf of the United States Congress, we are here to support a democracy movement in Iran. We support the organized resistance by women, students, youth, and other sectors of this society. But we support the Iranian resistance and we step away from claims of extremism, for that is not the case. We will call for international pressure, including diplomatic, military, and oil sanctions on all of those who will get in your way. We will call on the leadership of Iraq to own up to what is right and what is just. Let them hear our voices. We have sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice of young men and women of the United States of America in the battle. We want Iraq to live up to its promise and free the people of Camp Liberty and let them live in freedom and justice, go back to Ashraf and to be able to be free. And so, my friends, I did not come this long distance to not convince you that you're not alone. And I leave you with the understanding that we are together in unity in the United States. And that you can take pride in the fact when someone asks, what difference do you make? And you can say, as you look to the voices that you will hear, You've made a magnificent difference. And again, as those of us who lived through challenging times in America and were able to rise in the sun with Dr. Martin Luther King, who understood that it is all about America's values. It is, in fact, to be able to recount for you in my final words that when he sat in a jail in Birmingham, he wrote a letter to those who accused him of being an agitator who should go away. And this is my final intrigue and challenge to you. And it is one that I take home in my heart. He said these simple words, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. If there is injustice in Camp Ashraf, the world must stand with you. And as they stand with you, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Thank you, Sheila Jackson Lee.
And now it's my friends, it's my honor to introduce our next speaker. And as I do, let me say, most people are known not only for the friends they keep, but the enemies they make. And our next speaker has all of you as her friends. But to the mullahs in Tehran, there's no greater enemy than your president, President Maryam Rajave. for your efforts in defense of Mujahideen Ashraf and Liberty and in support of delisting the PMI. You stood fair to the wrong policy of the State Department by insisting on the right of the residents in Ashraf and Liberty. Uh, you have shown your commitment to the true values of the United States. Uh, you are the years of a new policy in the United States based on freedom and human rights against the threat of fundamentalism and terrorism of the Mullah regime. I'm confident your names as well as your courage will remain forever in the history of Iran, the United States, Middle East, and the whole world. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Madam Rajavi, Madam Rajavi on, on behalf of the United States Congress, I want to give you this plate that is sealed in glass. And when Iran is free and you are the president, we will break this glass and break bread in Tehran together. Madam President-elect, we have become sisters. The challenge of your great leadership is spreading around the world. And so I present to you a gold rim symbol of the United States Congress and our unity. And for your two children, this is a keychain, And you will place on it a key to their freedom. And they will be free. We honor you with this freedom.